Hello and welcome to Disco Elysium, which is a game about being a detective in Elysium and probably Disco too. I don't know. Anyway, basically, um, I've played this game before on my own, but I thought since the, uh, yeah, since the final cut came out the other day, as in like two days ago, we're going to be playing some of this. I'm thinking of doing a full series, but we'll see how it goes down uh, from the first few episodes. So yeah, basically I wanted to play the game again now that it has full audio, um, full voiceover, full everything. So what we're going to do is we're going to hop in and figure out our characters. Because, yeah, this game is rather interesting in the way it handles characters. There are three bases. Uh, so there is the thinker, who is extremely intelligent, very bad with people. Uh, there's also sensitive, a very psychological and magnetic personality, but unstable. And then there's physical, extreme physical, interacts with the world through his body, gets things done, but dumb as a rock. There's the create your own tab. And as you can see, if I go through here, uh, there's these things, which are all very big actually I'm surprised by how big these are but you know what fine that's okay no you know what let's go for that right so yeah basically this requires a lot of thinking in that um yeah there's there's a lot of stuff you can do and then that all goes over to this <laughs> yeah there's there's a lot of things Inland Empire is one of the most interesting things uh there's also empathy is really good Honestly, Inland Empire is the one I always go for. I went for it last time, and I think it's just incredible. It just means you end up having conversations with things in the crime scene, and talking to things in the crime scene, and they give you clues. And there's something about that which is just beautiful. So yeah, basically, we then wake up. The Furies at home in the mirror, it is their address. Even the clearest water, if deep enough, can drown. And then a completely black screen and just the word begin. There is nothing. Only warm primordial blackness. Your conscious for men sinny. No larger than a single grain of malt. You don't have to do anything anymore. Yeah, and the uh, voice acting is uh, charming. Ever. Never. Simply, simply keep on non-existing. An inordinate amount of time passes. It is utterly void of struggle. No ex-wives are contained within it. <laughs> this is yes, great. It is. What was that about X something? When a creeps up on you, a mass lies hidden in your dead angle, soaking in some lurid acidic sauce. It's bloated and shameful. A ball of meat surrounding you. This is a terrible line of questioning, and it will only lead to more awareness of the meat thing. Can plunge back into the fathomless deep. No, I want to learn more about the X something. X love. X tenderness. It is foolish of you to resurface to the loss. Not after all the damage you've suffered to get here. Some of it irreversible. Stay. Sail with me through the abyss of allergic zone. No, I want to get off now. I like pain and burning lights and wanting things from people who don't want to give them to me. Do you really? Don't be naive, of course. I want to... I do, let me off. You wouldn't like it if I told you what was back there. Why do you think you had to bludgeon yourself into oblivion? Or did you not sense yourself marinating? Poured so much on yourself. Got a bit carried away, did we, Chef? Fear and apprehension. You should ask what's out there first. Okay, there's voices for all of this stuff. Wait, I did this to myself? Yes, you're one disco mother. Th I don't care, I'm an idiot. Brave idiot. <laughs> Oh, brilliant. There's this giant ball there. An evil apes. And the evil apes are juking it out on the ball. You're one of them. It's basically 
all just evil apes duking it out on a giant ball. Ooh, and this duking it out, I keep hearing about that. What's that? Time for resources. It's just a stupid expression you picked up somewhere. The part of the presentation you want to take home with you is this. You have to beat the other evil apes in the face. Or you lose. That's yes, sad. it is. And you drowned in that sadness a long time ago. Oh yeah, this game is really depressing. What do you mean drowned? Lost. Oh jeez. And then we open our eyes. And things come into view. Uh, yeah, that's a wine bottle. There's some other stuff on the screen. You know, classic stuff. Great. This is, this is so good. Oh dear. This is not looking too hopeful. Right. This magnum-sized bottle of Commodore Red is empty. And then there's a load of tape. Looks like someone tore out the tape while the song was playing. This reel-to-reel player is still on, rolling empty. Uh, what's that? Take... You know what? Empty cassette, we will take that. There's a shoe. Let's take that. A mirror hangs above a bent and broken sink. In a fierce discharge of masculine energy, someone has ripped half the faucet off. Hot Continue. water sprays from the base and steam covers the mirror. You cannot see yourself, just the outline of a man. Suddenly, you realize you have no memory of the face that awaits you there, underneath the soft vapor. Yeah, really yeah. nothing. All recollection of the person you are the people in your life and even the world you're in has drowned in a sea of blood alcohol. This was no mere night of drinking. It was a deluge of world-ending proportions. Uh, what happens if we wipe As the you mirror? you slowly reach your hand towards the surface of the mirror. Abort. You clearly have not thought this through. You won't like what you see there. And you will never unbecome it. Okay. Maybe I should touch it first, make sure there's nothing wrong with my face. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There is definitely something wrong with it. How bad could Where it be? To even begin? There is the bloatedness, then the swollenness. It's like there's an upholstery of alcohol underneath your skin. Yeah, it doesn't look too good. Uh, I'm sure everything is fine. It's not. Your nose feels like a small balloon in the middle of your face. It hurts when you honk it. It doesn't appear to be a Honk. particularly tiny nose either. Not with all the drinks it's absorbed for you. At least my tongue is okay. <laughs> it's swollen and snail-like, wriggling between your fingers. <laughs> I'm scared. Don't I want scared. to stop doing this. It's only your face. It's not like anyone's going to see it. Wipe the mirror now. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Slightly, um, yeah. You have no yeah. idea who this thing is, do you? You have worn that grin into your face and now it won't come off. What does it even mean? What is the emotion you're trying to convey? It's indescribable. I think it's supposed to look suggestive. I'm afraid it's meant for the ladies. Uh, I'm insinuating that I'm vaguely sympathetic. I'm sort of pulling it off too in a sad has-been kind of way. There is some it charm to it. Ten years ago. Right, okay, and it's then there's... more than a cadaverous spasm now. Dig deep into your... Okay, so white checks. Okay, so the game works on two bases. There's red checks, which you can only try once. If you come back and try it again, it will be gone. Whereas white checks, if you change one of these two skills, for example, your encyclopedia knowledge changes, or you find a certain uh, thing out about yourself or whatever the thing is related to this, it can lower the check. Uh, all of them are recorded in your journal, so basically that is what happens, is you uh, do these checks, either you leave them or you do them. Uh, yeah, and there's like a very... Of you, it comes from a bad place somewhere in the past. That's all you know for now. Yeah, and you can't just try it again until you improve. So, you know, you can't just cheat it by continuing to do this until it, you know, you hit it. Electrochemistry impossible. It's too late. Like an image on film. The expression belongs to your primary motor cortex. It would take a minor neurological miracle for you to cease producing it. Let the mirror be for now. Okay, and there is a shirt. Awesome. Love a good shirt. Anything we can check. What's that? 
Ah, that's that'll be uh, the. Oh, oh, hello. There's a tie up there, or something else. Is it a tie? Okay, so yeah, as you can see, instead of before where it was really low, because I have a high savoir faire, because it's um my uh thing, I can I can then uh use this, and it has a seventy two percent chance of doing it. However, if we pull one of these, for, so this is seventy two percent chance if i pull on the, the fan come squeaking to a halt it should be easier to reach the tie now yeah that goes up to 97 percent, which is amazing and you know like it's very inspired it's by proper D, &D stuff it's released from the blade warning warning the necktie is no longer contained Continue. what you have in your hand is a fantastically colorful tie with four or five different patterns the knot reminds you of a noose. Ah, depressing. Yes. Anyway, um, we can then pull on the light bulb. A terrible mistake. Turn the lights off immediately. You can practically feel the photons burning a hole in your brain. The to lights pull to turn off. are off. Okay, right. Yeah, so basically it, it plays a lot like a proper RPG, like a tabletop RPG with these checks and stuff and being able to improve them and stuff. It's quite impressive. I really like it. Yeah, as you can see, like this is again quite high because of visual calculus, which is another uh, one of the things I do well in. What do you mean? Oh, shit. It's just the damage. How would you do that? What are you even trying to do? Yeah, basically we can't even we can't even uh, do that properly. We got really unlucky there. But uh, if we go downstairs, we might be able to see something else. Aha! And then you can see there's a little thing, a shoe, another shoe, and that means we have both there our shoes. Two identical shoes, both copiously green and indiscriminately snakeskin. Reunited on your feet. I do love the uh the writing is so like good. Two baby crocodiles. How do they fit? Good. They're balanced. Comfy. Feels like the only good thing about you right now, truth be told. I really like the narration as well. Uh the the, the voice is really nice. And yeah, okay, so we have that. Okay, there's also the tasks and stuff. So yeah, you can see, uh there are white checks which are things that we can do uh the, those are the, those on white are available to try now right so yeah basically those ones are all unavailable until we do something else hello officer ah hello you have a voice wait did you have a the voice before raises a cigarette to her lips okay her it's cliche and her face is speckled with birthmarks she can't be more than 28. officer or my military uh, personnel? Uh, no. Uh, why don't I remember being a cop Could or anything else? Of the drinking? Okay, so all of this has... This didn't used to have, uh, you know, dialogue, so they've really she added... Had time to put yeah. Her makeup on. This is her morning cigarette. She looks tired. Her beauty waning faster than it ought to at her age. Who in their right mind would let me be an officer don't of the be law? So harsh on yourself. They let almost anyone be a police officer. A glib remark. Don't let it stand. Assert yourself. Actually, I can see why they would entrust me with the law. I have the right a character. for contradictory statements. Uh, and then we can try the expression on her, which uh, I imagine. I'm not sure if you can actually succeed this, but... Try the expression. Come on. Why are you still doing this? Alcohol raises testosterone levels, especially in men. The levels remain elevated after inebriation ends and the pain begins. You seek comfort. It's only natural. She puts Fair enough. her cigarette. It's like you said the words a million times before. She looks back at you, a light glinting off her eyes. Okay, yeah, so before you go, I have some yes. questions for you. What is this place? You're Where am I? Hostel, sir. No, where are we? Where You're in the in world? Revishol. Revishol. Revishol is the disgraced former capital of the world, divided into zones of control under foreign occupation. Half a century after a failed world revolution, she is central to our moment in time. Is it 51 it's now? 51. What century? The current century. <laughs> That's what? What Centuries number? Centuries don't have numbers. They have names. And this is the current one. 
How many centuries have there been then? Civilization has existed for 8,000 years, sir. What's so funny? You're right. There is nothing funny about civilization. <laughs> See, this this game has a certain glibness to its writing, and I love it. Okay, so basically, I went, I got very, very drunk so much that I've lost my memory, and basically, uh, yeah, it seems like I was so loud that I basically uh, ruined ruined uh, the room and was very sadly screaming along to things. That makes sense. That sounds about right. Glad to have been of assistance. We could go in, go and knock on your her room door, but I don't want to interrupt her. That would be silly. So yeah, let's see. This week is the weekend edition of the satirical newspaper Trompe Le Monde. Uh, nothing on the front page rings a bell. Strange. Okay. Right. Mirror. Okay. So we have one that's now triable. So yeah. Uh, I can't remember what it was last time. Like forty percent, maybe less than. Uh, it was something along those lines. Uh, but if we go over now, yeah, you can see uh, it's still it's still uh, very low. It must have been it must have been more like seventeen percent, not forty seven percent. Is there a way? It belongs in the new, the third decade of the current century. Enough time had passed from the failure of the revolution that, for a fleeting moment, free market economy seemed like the ultimate uncontested way of life for our species. Things were good. It was smooth sailing. People made gold and champagne tinted interiors and facades to suit the times, calling this the new style. But more importantly, disco happened. Forget about ostentatious orchestrations. For Revachol, your city, that meant only one thing. Guillaume La Million. Out of the dazzling swirl of disco music, in an open air, what de nuit, somewhere in Revachol West, Guillaume's blonde mane appeared on the screen. He sang some bullshit. Then he made the expression. Maybe you thought some of the stardust would rub off on you. Maybe it did. Either way, it's all gone now. Only the grimace remains. I feel the need to add a clicking sound when I make the it. The click is used to spur on a horse. It also features heavily in Guillaume Le Million's regional mega hit, Don't Worry, Your Pretty Little Head. Continue. Sometimes you like to add finger pistols to the mix because unlike Guillaume Le Million, you are a police officer. It's your nifty little way to say, I'm armed and dangerous. Anything else? Like, who am I? Why did I become a cop? You have some understanding of the near history of disco, plus the trivia you've picked up along the way. Episodic memory, however, remains in the dark. It may never return. You should prepare yourself for that. We now have plus 2% to this. It is now... <laughs> 3% for this, uh, attempt the expression to stop happening. I don't think this is going to go well, but we can try anyway, screw it. Still not happening. It won't come off that easy. Yeah, we don't have a good enough uh, electrochemistry rating to make that happen. So yeah, let's head onwards. Uh, since we don't really have anything to do. Okay, and then there's things happening here. Oh wow, there's quite a lot here. Fair enough. Right, let's see what's around here. Yeah, so there's a lot of stuff around. Uh, let's talk to this person who looks important from behind the thing. A man in his late twenties stands behind the counter, inspecting a stuffed seabird. As you approach, he gives you a sideways glance then looks down again. Hello, cafeteria manager. How are you doing? There was disdain in his eyes. Even now he's purposely ignoring you. Something tells me you don't like oh, me. Oh no, you're a hero. A real hero cop. Are you the bartender? No, I'm not the bartender. I'm the cafeteria manager. He's very animated all of a sudden. This seems like a touchy subject. <laughs> What's the I difference? three cafeterias to manage. Three... Sylvie tends the bar here, not me. I'm only standing in. Where did this she Sylvie just, go? You know. There's something there, and it's not good. Look at the stuffed bird. Work of taxidermy. 
The white and brown seabird lies among piles of coasters and drying mugs. One of its wings broken. The man is trying to mend it. Okay. Looks like the bird was ripped off the shield that was used to mount it. Most likely on a wall. A small engraved steel tag says, The Great Skua. Yeah, someone over by the door waiting for me. However, obviously we're going to do everything else except that. Uh, first, because, you know, classic RPG stuff. Hello, sweetie. Hello, Lena. You shouldn't keep your colleague waiting. She nods towards the man in the orange bomber dra jacket. Okay, so people want me to go and see that. However, is there anything else I can do? Give me something else to do. A bespectacled man in an orange bomber jacket is tapping his foot on the floor. Looks like he's waiting for someone. You. As you approach, he narrows his eyes and extends his hand in greeting. If an assault were launched on this building right now, if the windows came crashing down and the whole world descended upon you, this man would hurl himself in death's way to save you. You are sure of this, but why? Interesting. On the of his bomber jacket, as well as on its back, are the same enigmatic white rectangles as on your blazer. Hold on, who is he to me? He is your half-brother. Shake his Hello. hand. I'm Kim Kitsuragi, Lieutenant, Precinct 57. You must be from the 41st. You realize he's waiting for your name. This is your chance to come up with a really good name for yourself. Get creative. Conceptualize. Yeah, so uh, we have the chance to uh, do... This basically, if your if your conceptualization was above eleven, you would uh, definitely pass that. But since it's uh, not eleven, it is instead four. It goes down a lot. Uh, but I think it trails off a bit. I don't really know my name. Invent a name for yourself. Raphael no. Ambrosius Gusto. Uh, it's very very cool, but maybe also uh, just a bit too ostentatious. You instinctively run your hand over the multi pattern silk of your tie. Its slickness gives you comfort and reassurance. Don't worry, Raphael Ambrosius Custo is one classy name for one classy cop. My name is Raphael Ambrosius Custo. Yes. Well, but shouldn't I have a badge or something? You mean you don't have a badge? I, I've I it it was not on me when Using I woke up. Identification card is a serious matter. My vehicle has a shortwave. You can use it to report your badge missing. I would advise you to locate it as quickly as possible. But getting the body down should still take precedence. I but I can't I remember can anything. Drank last night and the night before, and that you are still drunk now. But I have seen officers go through worse, much worse. If you need something for your headache, there is a general store nearby. But as I said, the dead body should be our number one concern. Yeah, and just in case, what were we supposed to do to again? The then we go out back and take the body down. Okay, let's After go. You, officer. Right, so we have some new tasks. Those are added to here. Obviously, we need to interview the uh, cafeteria manager. However, maybe... You need to suppress the urge to throw up and approach it. Okay, smells like spoiled meat and curdled dairy a human being decomposes. The corpse looks at you with bulging white eyes. The face around them does not look human. It's swollen and ready to burst. His lips are fish-like and his tongue like a ball gag in his mouth. Ooh, that's you not seem fun. You holding your breath. Look down. The cargo belt twists his neck at an unnatural angle. The body below appears stiff. It's letting out an ungodly rot. The smell seeps in even through your clenched nostrils. Okay, uh, led to go of your nose without throwing up. Yeah, the that was gonna fail. Impulsive. It's okay. Happens to everyone. Keep it. Thanks. The hangover is clearly making this worse for you. You could use some ammonia to clear your head. Okay, so we can try and get something for the smell. However, who are you? Kuno's got this. Okay. If there ever was such a thing as an ugly kid, then this is it. He's almost exquisite in his ugliness, like a gremlin. So you refer to yourself in the third person? What the fuck are you calling a third person? Kuno's the fucking first person? Okay. He looks slightly confused. But proud, he 
came up with that retort. But right as he's getting distracted, you hear a malevolent hiss from behind the fence. Watch out, Kuno! He's trying to fiddle you! He's going to put his hands on you! Okay, I don't know what's happening there. Uh, those kids are like... Not gonna be helpful in the slightest, never mind. Hello, you're the gardener though, you might be more helpful. My partner told me you may have some ammonia, can I have some? Sure, I'm done with it. Okay. Go easy on that stuff. It gave me a terrible headache. He knows where we are, he just wants directions. Oh, so I should be hiding it a bit. If there's a corpse, then you're going to need those gloves for the autopsy. One more thing, can I borrow your gloves? Sure, keep them. I have another pair. Okay, so that means we have now the gloves and these give me plus one interfacing. So yeah, basically they mean that we have a bit more in terms of our interfacing. And we also picked up the ammonia, which means that, uh, yeah, we get to go back over it. Ooh, hello, there's some things here. Heavy workers boots with reinforced toes and hobnails all over the yard. Okay, so someone who does heavy physical labor. Isn't this something an industrial worker would wear? Lieutenant, workers' boots tracks. Not it. Get an exact count. Maybe more. Than oh five. yeah. No, eight pairs of boots have shuffled back and forth in the mud. One, standard work boot, steel reinforced toes, number forty-six. Two, standard work boot, steel reinforced toes, number forty-four. Number 45 or 46? Wait, which is it? You don't know. It's a miracle you can tell the prints apart as it is. The cold must have preserved them. Six. An aberration. Light as air. Even pace. Same make of boot, but number 41. Male or female? Impossible to tell. Could also have been an adolescent. The gait is undeveloped. I'm pretty good at this, ain't You're I? Not bad. It's as if the whole world darkens. Everything else has a thin film of unimportance on it, and the tracks burn in the middle of it in a strange, beautiful way. Yeah, the way this game describes things is just amazing, and I love it. Seven, the glowing outline of a standard work boot, number 46, but the imprints are twice as deep as the others. The weight exceeds 200 kilograms. Okay, yeah, so this person must have carried the body. Eight, and yet another standard work boot. Number 44. There's an aberration in the pattern of the sole, however. The right sole is smoother, more worn. How many? Eight. I was pretty off then. I counted 20. The same guys are going back and forth. I never got the hang of it. Hyperopia. Do you see anything out of the ordinary? Uh, light step, number 41 a shoe. Woman or a kid? I don't think there's any way to Understood. be sure. Anything else? A heavy one, 200, 200 kilograms. Could it be the combined weight of two people, one carrying the other who's tied up? Let's say a heavily built worker carrying a similarly built, soon to be dead man. He might be right. An aberration, one sole is smoother than the other. Yeah, that's an important thing to point out. Interesting. Let's name it the old sole. Do you have any Someone ideas? Someone operating a workbench with a pedal? Like a joiner at the harbour? Or maybe a drummer? <laughs> he it the moment he says it. Perhaps it could be a driver. A driver would wear out the right shoe before the left. The accelerator is on the right. Interesting, if only I would come up he with that idea. He doesn't seem to hear you. Looking south, toward the traffic jam instead. The machines are silent. The engines are all turned off. Yeah, so obviously he's thinking about the traffic jam, the fact that there's a lot of truck drivers there. And obviously truck drivers would be the ones who would wear it out fastest because they wear shoes all the time. How old do you think these tracks maybe, are? Maybe. Seven days would fit the time frame provided to us by the caller who reported the hanging. It is not impossible. How do you I know? I pulled last week's forecast for coastal Havashol. Seven days below freezing. The day before, the day of his hanging, was the last warm day. Okay. Correct again. Sub-zero temperatures would preserve the tracks in a good state. The commotion here could have taken place a week ago. We've been through all of it. Yeah, so that is all of that done. However, there's some stuff over this way, so let's see that. Has been oxidizing for some years. What's that over there? Oh, we can't get to that. Okay, what's this, though? An inconspicuous pile of the roofing material 
eat tonight. Why am I looking at this pile of roofing material? Because there's a secret door hidden behind the panels of Etonite. That's why they're too orderly. Pull the panels there aside. You see a shabby little door. Ah, yes. Easily spotted. Well, I say that it was half and half. Okay, so nothing that I can see around here. Be still, my beating heart. It's amphetamine. Sweet amphetamine. The lieutenant isn't studying the powder in the mirror. He's studying you. Um, I've heard amphetamine... Someone has taken narcotics here. Perhaps the in police should Perhaps interfere? not. This is below our pay grade, detective. However... He points to the ladder in the see corner. See ladder there? It's probably another way into the industrial harbour, no? A secret path the local kids use. Okay, so that seems like a good bet. Okay, so can we check what these are from here? These barrels are half full of drain water. And then that over there, we can't check on that yet. So I'm imagining what we need to do is actually get down somewhere else. Although it's getting kind of hard to see where we're heading. Ooh, here we go. Here we go. There's the exit. And there's a thing there. Okay. Ooh, wait, there's more stuff here. Hang on. I missed that. And then up here, it looks like a complicated little winding path that's kind of temporary. Or, you know, not supposed to be there at all. Ah, nose are fed. That's interesting. Also, hello. Uh, what do you have to say? Tell me about the case. What do you want to know? Literally anything. I can't remember a single Maybe thing. you can tell me what you do know to help me narrow it down a bit. Uh, only what you do told you me before. Me to brief you? Brief, yes, that sounds good. So this game has a very interesting take on centrism. It basically makes fun of you for being centrist. I've spent the last 20 years deciding on which side to ground into f pig feed. Why? We should ground the owners into fine paste and feed them to the pigs. Fuck it. When I said we have to navigate community matters, I did not mean we have any say in them. Why are we on the same case? You yeah. And I are pawns in a pissing competition. His disdain is clear. This man would not use such an expression otherwise. Okay, what you do you don't mean? Know. I assumed you were in on it. I I know what I'm in on. Retrograde amnesia. Cop off. Cop off? It's just stupidity. We shouldn't waste any more time on it. If you want my take, ask me after we've inspected the victim. Uh, also, I believe that's a coat down there, which is interesting. Oh, also, is there something here? Okay, there's some money. Interesting. Also, is that a coat down there, by the way? Um, and we can't access that. Okay. Ah, wait, there's one that's more possible. No, the hanged man. Okay, we forgot about that. Yes, I forgot about that because I didn't check after the ammonia. Because we got the ammonia, and that means it's easier now. I don't know how much easier, but it might be easier. The ammonia only makes it worse. The combination forces tears out of your ducts. The ammonia didn't help at all. Nor does the wind right now. The weight is reassuring, like a crenel on solid fortification. Pat, pat, pat. I've seen strong men turn themselves inside out for hours. You are facing tough odds here. Alcohol withdrawal makes it considerably harder. You seem I think to be I've fine. Lost my sense of smell. Not being hungover helps too. I don't want to be a cop. Okay, you've said it. You needed to say it. And now that you have, you need to get your shit together. Okay, so let's turn away. Uh, that was completely useless. Let's not try that again for a while. Uh, let's see, we now have a new thing, which is the volumetric shit compressor, which is really good, honestly. I love, I love it, and yeah, it's gonna take half an hour of, uh, time, I think in game, although it might be real life. RCM Emergencies Desk number 8102, with a slogan, Mankind, be vigilant. Good mail delivery box. Aww. This book is about pate. This book you don't really understand about what it is about, nor does it seem important. Uh, as opposed to the pate one, which seems very much useful. Goods from the lorry haphazardly litter the surroundings. So yeah, someone's broken in or something. There's you though. You are rather 
Okay, so if we had to place bets, this big person, this massive monstrously muscly person, I'm imagining they might be the person who carried the body. Bastards! We have a right to work! You here to fuck with us? Beat the honest worker down. No. Good. We're fighting for a cause here. Right to work! Right to work! Besides, we're not that different. It helps if people see us talking cops and strike breakers together. Shows authorities are on our side. What kind of cause are we Rights talking about? Of people. Rights of workers to have gainful employment, to make a salary, and feed their families. Regardless, I have some questions for you. Yeah, let's just move away Maybe from you this. Should ask them the questions like why we're not allowed to make a living here. Shame on you. Who are all these strike breakers? Honest men and women with rights to work, to be useful, not toys for corporate interests. We came here to help the harbor run smoothly in time of crisis. If union fucks don't want work, they ought to let in those who do want work. Okay, so these people are all anti-union workers, which seems kind of counterproductive, but there you go. Doors locked. The guards blocking the way to the access panel. And I don't mean the scrawny mess bunk either. I mean head measurer. Or whatever he is. Head measurer? The Semenes guy standing up there on the overhead passage won't let anyone by. The access panel is right behind him. Bad. Standing on a narrow bridge, he's got a strategically advantageous position. And he's trained. I don't know how the Union has a trained killer up there. But that one's no joke. And my men are tired and hungry. They're workers. Not these native fucks don't understand civilized. Right, so basically this person's racist as well as uh, bad at being in a union and understanding stuff about unions and worker rights. There's something off here, but he won't say what. Never heard of it. Are you lying? We're done here. I have a strike to break. Okay, yeah, I think... I think, I think I made a mistake there, accusing him of lying. What exactly is a kind scab? Kind of a worm. Content with mere survival. They come, they want to do our job for shittier pay, screwing over both themselves and us. Everybody loses. Yeah, okay, you don't seem to like them much. Be bloody stupid, or freaking evil to scab. Or I guess, scared maybe. But scared of what? Of who? Personally, I'd rather beg than scab. If the gentleman shouting on the street came begging, maybe they'd have gotten something. Speaking of, what brings the RCM here? To the wild north? Come to see the strife? Uh, investigating a murder, murder, yeah. That sounds like a lot of hard work. You'd never see me investigating a murder. Maybe you want to help me solve it by telling me you did it. Of course, policia. It wasn't me. You can rule me out. Easier that way. Should we? He's nice. I don't like. He didn't do it. It's the truth. Right, yeah. Drama basically is a thing about whether you can lie and whether you can figure out other people's lies right. Walk right past him, then press the button to unlock the door, then go past him again, and you enter the arbor through the office. Está. Hmm, for some reason it doesn't seem like it's going to be that easy. Don't worry, I'm sure it's not completely impossible. For example, you could best measure head in a physical confrontation. Or you could convert to a semi supremacist worldview. Or, hmm, maybe it actually is completely impossible. Uh, right, nice talking. Yep, that sounds good. We totally have no issues here. Right, so, yes, as far as I can tell, in case of strike, press button behind guard. Uh, hermetically sealed door locked by electronic means. There's no lock picking or door kicking this one. Oh dear. Nobody betrays your degeneracy. Yeah, Measurehead. His body totally betrays his degeneracy. Okay. Don't say anything. Size him up first. Are you admiring my morphophysiology? Okay. You must be frightening to stand in the shadow of this racial pinnacle. Be calm. I'm sandwich. You are not in danger. 
Because you are not a threat to me. It remains to be seen how long the ship's singularity lasts. Right, okay, so yeah, basically we've now taken on that thought, which means a lot of stuff has improved, which means that we have now unlocked quite a lot of different things at this point. Since we need to get that body done ASAP, let's see if we can't uh, figure that out now. You know, when you're thinking things through, do you ever have conversations with, like, I your have brain? No idea. The lieutenant's conceptualization skills must be rather rudimentary. The lieutenant is a police officer of the old school. His concerns are material and extrinsic. But this isn't an old school case. So how do you know... What? Think? I do most of my work inside my notebook. Yeah, so as you can see, it's kind of interesting. There's quite a bit of this stuff where two of your skills that you're good at uh, have a conversation with each other, and then it means that you uh, get different outcomes sometimes. It's really interesting. The produces his small blue notebook and idly thumbs through a few pages. That's where his conversations with himself take place. We interesting. We have our different mediums. His is written. That's Good. all for now. Let's change the subject. Excuse me? Uh, nothing, just you an have observation. A, a distinctive way of walking. If I were to walk in front of you, we would surely collide. Okay, what do you mean distinctive? I hope you don't take this the wrong way. It's just a collegial observation. In the 57th, we call it the Jamrock Shuffle. Officers from Jamrock's 41st precinct tend to move a bit erratically. They say it's a scene-clearing technique developed by one of your lieutenants for gathering evidence. It's erratic, yet thorough. Prioritizes containers. Yes, but containers contain things, shiny things. They're interesting. And then you can go for weird fucking jokes in the game, which is slightly annoying. You're kidding me, why containers? I don't know. Containers contain, I guess. I'm making assumptions. We should move on. Passing along frivolous interdepartmental stereotypes is not usually his oeuvre. He regrets bringing it up. There he still is, looking right through you with his white eyes. The body below is entirely dedicated to that corpse smell. Emitting it is all it does now. Yeah, so now we have the ability to go for the uh, endurance test again. Let's see if this works. As you breathe in... Hey, the there we go. It's the smell of the mind telling you to run and your stomach to wring itself empty. With your hands at your sides and your eyes squinting, you stand in it. Do they always do that? They do after seven days, yes. Step the closer. You is naked, but for a pair of underpants and enameled boots. His skin is greenish, marbled with decaying veins, and blotched by lividity. A fading web of tattoos covers his chest and shoulders. The cargo belt used to fasten him to the branch above appears industrial in strength. Uh, let's inspect the, the boots. The material appears to be ceramic. Its clean white stands in stark contrast to the decaying flesh above the knee. The man wore thick polymer socks, probably for padding. A fine array of interlocking plates covers them. Yeah, this is some kind of armor. Indeed. Technically speaking, these are sabatons, not boots. Okay, what kind of armor is this exactly? Ceramic plate. Zirconium dioxide, most likely. This is where the make would be. Where? Under the hill. Fair weather. Fair weather model T500VE. I'm guessing that's vitreous enamel. This is advanced stuff. Where's the rest of it? Piece by piece. He's been out here for seven days. It would be odd if they didn't. We okay. should keep a look up for these pieces. The armor could yield information. Maybe he'll know something. Okay, so yeah, there's the obviously a lot of stuff we can do the there. Decaying form, ageless and synthetic. How could this man afford such expensive hardware? Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good question to that's ask. for us to find out. My initial report on the area suggests he was a security guard for the harbor company. But that's just hearsay. Okay, these look pretty advanced for us as a security guard, yeah. I agree. 
This equipment is way beyond what a guard can afford. Knock on the boot. A small bell-like sound fills the air, like tapping on the side of a porcelain cup. Okay. It's anything but. This material is a kinetic redistributor. It spreads kinetic energy horizontally, from plate to plate, dissipating it entirely. See? Faint organic lines cover the plates where they separate into smaller ones. These plates then divide into smaller plates until there are hundreds of them altogether, like whirls of floorboards. The design looks organic, influenced by highly resistant wood materials like lignum vitae and ebony, perhaps. What does this remind me of? If trees were made of porcelain, this is what their cross sections would look like. Okay, looks like there's a serial number, yeah. Good. Can you read it to me? E50 100 1000, yeah. A and a number. That's something. We can use the radio in my kinema when we're done. Either station can chase it for us. Can we try and pull the boots off? This feels dangerous. Are you sure? Grab the boot under your arm. The stench fills your nostrils. As you push downward, an ominous creaking sound comes from above. Stop! Uh oh. Pig's gonna pull his head off. <coughs> Brutal! Why are you hanging on to that boot? <laughs> These boots would go super well. We should conduct research. We are not detectives. We are we not detectives? There may be clues inside the boot. I'm sorry. I didn't even want to take them off. I just thought I should try. Try what exactly? I wanted to see what happens. I don't think we should do anything just for the hell of it. Besides, there's no way you're getting them off. All the organic matter in his body has been flowing down into the boots. They are fused to his feet now. Why do you think the locals haven't scavenged them yet? Yeah, that's a good point. Also, that's disgusting and gross. Ew. Back off and the look at the corpse. The slowly twists on the cargo belt. His torso covered in tattoos and extremities blotched pink and blue. They sure wanted him to stay there. The polyester seems strong. It's not merely polyester. It's still reinforced. See these lines? This is where the wires run. I see rabbits for more than 20 strands. This makes getting him down much more problematic than I had assumed. How did they even get him up there? Yeah. The news is one of those things that's easier to use one way around. Did they climb up using the kid's ladder? That ladder can't carry a grown man. I didn't see any splintering either. Did you? I think they lassoed the branch, then pulled on the belt to close the buckle. Yeah, because it's cut off, so it would be relatively easy. In fact, it would probably rest there just naturally if you threw something over that end. You can see that it kind of bends down like this, or towards the camera. I don't know. It's one of the two. Is this a map of the night sky? Yeah. Map of the stars. I do see some similarity to astronomical charts. Great century Messinian, maybe. But this seems more particular. Customized somehow. Okay, like things that were meaningful to him instead of just the constellations. As if someone left out most of the night sky, filtering it through personal choice. The principle of this filter remains unknown to you. The thought dissipates, and you feel as though you were only half right. I'm missing something here, Sorry. yeah. What the fuck is that? An instant color camera. Okay. I have only two impulse, so nobody move. I don't want to waste one. A sound, a shrill flash, followed by the breaking of a small ampoule of glass. You see streams of color pour onto the thick, glossy piece of paper, rolling out. Right, yes, so we have a picture then. Cool machine. Yes, it is pretty cool, isn't it? He's proud There's of it. Only one ampoule left. Use it wisely. What do we need this photo for? It contains for? insight to the victim's person. By his build, I'd say this was a man of physical violence. The story he wanted his body to tell was important to him. It is his letter. To us. Someone should decipher it. We need to show it around. Right, okay. So we have Inland Empire, which is really high. So we have a very high chance of succeeding this. Right, let's see if we can. I'm gone. Yeah. Where have you gone? Into the wild pile yonder. Where is that? In the past. Way out west. 
I can see you're gone, but who are you? I'm a joke. Look at me. There's nothing funny about you. There is nothing funny about jokes either. Who were you when you were alive? A killer. A motherfucker. And a killer. I have another question. Go ahead, Kobo. Okay, what is happening? What do you mean? I'm talking to you. It's the power of your... Imagination. Okay. Yeah, man! Don't be crazy! Inanimate objects and dead people can't really talk to you. Your wild imagination is doing this. Ask some more of those questions you love so much. He okay. Loves those. Why do I love questions so much? That is a good question. Because you're a copper rooney. Look at all of them go. Do you want more questions? Give me a comical amount of questions. Coming right up, Copper Rooney Rooney. This is getting upbeat now. Is my name Rooney? Uh, no, you're no Rooney. Rooney is obviously, of course, the name is uh, Raphael Ambrosius Costo. Listen to yourself. You're not a Raphael anything. You're probably just a Harry or something. I feel like I've been That's getting... right. Harry. Right, uh, could I really you be a Harry? Be anything you want to be, brother Copo. Why do I feel like I've forgotten something terrible? Because you have... Who killed you? Love did me in, brother Copo. It was love all along. Why are you investigating my murder? Yeah, I imagine something indescribable would happen. Ah. <laughs> I can, I can act like a kid and just say that. I hate you. You stink and you're boring. Do I remind you of someone? You don't remind me of anyone. A deep sea no, creature. not quite. Be fair now. Sure I do. You just don't want to admit it. Yeah, he reminds me of me. Also, see me in your dream. Oh, that wasn't what was said on here. But hey, uh, could it still be he was moved after death? There's always a chance. We should check for ligament marks on his neck to see if they're in tune with the belt. We'll have to get him down first. Right, let's see how we can get him down. Yeah, I think we've got everything we can out of him. Hmm. Well, you know, there's it's a lot still in him, but it's getting worse. A unique challenge. I brought chain cutters, but I don't see a good angle of approach to the belt. The cadaver is a good 1.2 meters up. Neither one of us can reach the belt without assistance. And even if we do, there's the question of cutting it. Can't someone else do it? Uh, we could saw the branch. Climb up there and saw the branch? Yeah, it does seem there a little dangerous. A risky way, with less falling down of trees. I don't know, uh, just shoot the belt, the buckle bullet will break it. It absolutely will not, officer. That's not how physics work. It will maybe cut one thread loose. Yeah! Now we're talking. Entertain Akuna with some shit. Yeah, let's let Kim Kitsuragi decide this so that he can, uh, yeah, because I think, I think he probably has a better chance than me. And produces a lightweight firearm. He drops a paper cartridge in the barrel, separates the scouring stick, and gives the cartridge five tucks, securing it in place. He then steps back and assumes the fellow's stess position, taking aim. The corner of his eye twitches. His finger is on the trigger. He's gonna fucking miss! The kid's voice is drowned in a shrill blast that echoes off the walls of the surrounding tenements. A cloud of smoke slowly parts in the air as the lieutenant steps back and says to himself, God damn it. Whatever you do, do not console him. Okay, so yeah, we have the option to do the hand-eye coordination thing, but... We could try something else. Uh, we could say shut up, but I'm not sure if that's going to help or not. Close your left eye first. Your field of view narrows. The branch slowly moves, becoming entirely two-dimensional. The metal buckle glimmers, catching the morning light as the corpse slowly rotates. Okay. Right, how did we... Ah, oh, shit. We hit the corpse. A plume of smoke erupts from the barrel. Your hand goes numb from the explosion. With your ears still ringing, you lower the weapon to see what happened. You missed the belt. 
but hit the corpse straight in the chest. Bits of ribcage protrude from the skin. No blood, only a murky sludge dripping down his belly. The sudden stink makes your eyes water. Yeah, so we should have just left it. Nah, swallow Feels defeat. Like shit, man. How did this happen? Hit him straight in the chest. How horrible. You're so sorry. How do we get inside the From harbor? The gates, by negotiating or fighting. I'm unenthusiastic about fighting. Or we can try to find some secret third path. It's an ugly door. Let's get to it then. Right. I th think I remember there was a way to get down. Ooh, however, we have uh, leveled up. Yeah, that is a good point. We can level up something. So... What's a good idea? I'm thinking maybe hand-eye coordination is a good one. We are slightly having issues with that. So we're going to level that up. Uh, and then, yeah, I think that's everything. Uh, then we can also go over here. There's not too much around here. Uh, right. Also, we can interact with that. Uh, but I will do that in a bit. Getting the body down, access to the harbour, right. Uh, anything else in terms of our things that we can retry? We can try that one again. Measure head, conceptualization. We didn't do that one because that would be bad. We are not going to try that again. Right, so there is this. Uh, yeah, there's this. But whether we can actually get up there is another matter. Ooh, it's letting us click on that though. It wasn't before, so maybe we have Looks the option like now. Left his tarpaulin cloak hanging on the railing here. When the wind ruffles the cloak, you can most definitely see a white rectangle on its back. Right, <laughs> you son of a gun! It's a cop's cloak. Yes, it's probably yours. It bears the RCM insignia, and you have a habit of being careless with your equipment. You could probably make a jump. You look like you've done some track and field in your day. Uh, okay. Let's try this. Fuck it, let's try it. Let's go for Savoir Faire and try that. I don't think it's gonna go well, but hey. Uh, yeah, that was a fail. Nope, no. That's still too high. What were you thinking? You're not a gymnast. You're a boxer. And you've climbed way too high up here. Yeah, uh, there seems to be a bit of an issue sometimes with the wrong voice clip playing over the uh, subtitles, which is quite bad, but hey. You could have died there. Shit, 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 shit. I'm failing you. This wasn't part of our deal. Okay, so our health and our morale uh, went wrong there. Good, good, good. Okay. Wait, does that mean we just died? You feel something in your chest. An unnatural pressure. It's spreading to your left arm. So I'm guessing this is bad. Very, very bad. This is the end. Bad. Try to remain all conscious. All you feel is pain and weakness. You have to surrender now. We all do. It gets so dark. You don't even see her face. Like you always thought you would. You only see pain and fear. Okay, so yeah, that little uh, thing actually went really badly, and then I died. So yeah, that's um, that's what uh, this is all about. You can literally just die because you made the wrong decision. Slightly harsh, but hey, uh, I wasn't exactly in the healthiest position there. I kind of made a mistake and then paid for it. So. Yeah, this will probably be back as a series. In fact, when was the last time there was a save? In fact, I imagine, ah, here. Right, so that was a few minutes ago, a few minutes before we did that, so, you know, not an issue. But yeah, that was, that was fun. We actually, we actually just died, which is kind of not what I was expecting. Let me know if you want a series of this, either below or on Twitter or in my Discord. So yeah, thank you and uh, goodbye everyone.